Okay, let's talk a little bit more about the modifiers for our stroke that we have up here. So let's kind of blend it in with some other things. But uh, we have lazy mouse, lazy step, and lazy snap. So the way lazy mouse works, you can turn it off or on. One is effectively the same thing as it being off, is if I try to do a stroke and I'm trying to make this as straight as possible, I have to really concentrate and there's still some variation just from my hand kind of moving around. If I increase lazy radius, what this is going to do is you'll see now that there's this red line and the resulting stroke is the average of the position of everything that happened inside that red line. So it's easier to get a clean straight line there. And you can change the value of the of the stroke depending on how, how uh, smooth and straight you want it. So that is a, a nice option to have at your disposal. And then we have lazy step which is part of lazy mouse. So I guess I'll give it a little bit of a radius there. And then if you increase lazy step, what you're going to get is this kind of stippling effect, which can be useful for seams or stitching, that kind of thing. I almost never use it except to kind of keep it at a very low value. If you go all the way down with it, I'll hit control Z a few times. If it's all the way at zero and you're making quick strokes, you'll get this uh, sort of skipping thing here, which is the stylus is just not sampling quick enough to get the movement. But if you make this kind of a, a lower value, like we can try 0.1. Now, when I move quickly over the mesh, we're going to get a nice smooth stroke because it's, it is technically doing that stippling thing, but the, the sampling is so close together that you get a, a, a nice clean line there. And then what lazy snap is, is if it's set to zero, let's say I make a line here and then I want to pick up where I left off. I could, you can get close to it. Oh, it looks like I got confused there, but it's maybe not going to be perfect. And also the, this is maybe not the exact right brush to demonstrate this with. Uh, let me see if I can find, I think it's called layer. Yeah, let's try this. So with lazy snap, what it's going to do is it's going to kind of remember where your last stroke ended. And then, so like right now I could try to pick up over here, but it's not going to be the exact right spot. I think a layer might not be the one. There's one where it's like it, it'll it'll maintain this as as one value, but uh, let's see if I if I increase the lazy snap a bit, you can drop and then when you pick up again, it's gonna it's gonna stick to the exact same spot. This, little, this maybe not the right way to uh, demonstrate it. I'll, I'll think of a better way to do that shortly here. But anyway, that's kind of what lazy snap is. So it's it's nice to have lazy step and lazy snap here. I very rarely use them except on occasion. So that's why they're there, because it's otherwise it's, it lives in, in the stroke menu or some spot and you got to go hunt for it. And there's a little extra space, so why not, right? Okay, so that's going to be the lazy mouse stuff. The most important is the lazy mouse, which I use all the time, and you just want to be aware of your lazy radius option. Let's hop back over to the standard brush. Okay, let's see. So uh, the other thing that you can do here is you can hold the space bar down. And what the space bar is going to do is it's going to expose a couple of things here that I don't actually have in my, my menu because I don't use it very often. So, and uh, even though this looks blank, it's actually in a different context, there's buttons here. So for now, we're not going to worry about that, but just take my word for it. We'll see that stuff soon enough. So if you hold the space bar down, what you have access to is the uh, st uh, strokes here. So we have drag rect and freehand and color spray and spray and drag dot. So right now it's set to dots. Uh, probably freehand and dots are not going to look that different. But if you go to drag rect, what it's going to do is it's going to drag the stroke out. So you get something that looks like that. And if you put an alpha on there, an alpha is going to be a filter for the brush. You can click the alpha off here. There's this menu of black and white images. So if I decide to make a star, this is how you would potentially you know, embed stars or whatever on your Captain America shield or wherever the stars needed to be embedded. You might notice there's a bit of a fall off there. That's because of that focal shift that we talked about in the last video. If I want there to be no fall off, I just set this all the way to negative 100. And then when I draw them on, the stars are going to be uh, a lot sharper. And conversely, if I want there to be even more fall off, you can do something like that, which honestly looks kind of cool, kind of like a starfish, whatever. So anyway, that is using alphas and drag rect. So you can experiment with these other alphas if you want. Uh, and the other brush that's probably worth mentioning here is going to be the color spray and the spray are very similar. Drag dot is actually, that one's pretty useful as well. So rather than dragging to change the size, you can drag to change the position. And if you want the size to be different, you just make your brush a little bit bigger and you'll get something that looks like this. So that's fun, right? Okay, let's get rid of some of these stars. 
because I want to show you uh, spray. Spray and color spray are going to be comparable, except you get a little variation if you decide to do some poly painting. Um, poly painting is something that we may talk about. It's not as useful for my workflow as it as it maybe once was, uh, so we're, we probably won't spend too much time on it. But anyway, so this is how the dots works. I'm going to actually need to change my alpha. Well, we can leave it here. It'll be pretty obvious what's going on. And that might be a little bit too intense, so let's take our Z intensity down to something a little bit more reasonable, and we'll set our focal shift back to whatever a default value might feel like. So what it's doing is it's actually applying a star alpha in kind of a randomized spray. So this is really useful. This is a good trick for like little pores. If you come over and uh, one of these might work, something like this. You know, if you want to do kind of skin pores, you can see here the, the fidelity of the geometry is kind of low. So it's it's not looking quite as pory as, as we might like, but if I hit control D a few times, which puts our poly count up to a quarter million, you can see that starts to get a lot smoother and more natural potentially. Okay, so that those are your strokes. You got uh, drag rect, dots, freehand, and the sprays, and drag dot. So they're all, eh, some of them are kind of related, uh, and some of them are, are, are useful. So the, the one I almost always use, turn the alpha off, it's going to be dots or freehand. It's, they're, they're just very, very similar. And for, for sculpting, these things are like all these brushes here have slightly different behaviors and they they, they employ some variation of one of those sort of main categories. Okay. So speaking of clay tubes, clay tubes is one of my very most favorite brushes. I'm going to go ahead and set my focal shift to, whoops, I am clearly hitting a button on my tablet, which is opening up some menus here. So let me get rid of the draw menu. Okay. So the way clay tubes works is it's very similar to the standard brush, except it has a square alpha sort of built into it. So rather than it being round like this, turn up my Z intensity just a little bit, it's going to have more of a square presentation. And I feel like I probably need to tighten my focal shift up and you'll see the result of basically reducing the space, the available fall off distance between the max intensity, which is the inside circle and the minimum intensity, which is the outside circle. When that stuff is kind of multiplied through this, this alpha, this is what you get. And you could totally change it if you want. We could try this guy here, back up a few steps, right? So that's the effect of that. So the, the alphas have a very significant influence on the behavior of the brush. I don't think I've ever used that one before, but uh, interesting display there. So for the clay tubes, the thing I really like about it is it's easy to build up forms in kind of a planar way. And as we're, as we're trying to discover how certain features might feel, it's a, it's a good idea to, to try to find like the, the big, broad, planar elements, you could think of like a cheek or something, like you would want to have the cheekbone kind of going down and then the jaw, line, whatever, right? So this is obviously just a flat plane, but that's kind of how you would approach sculpting. You start off with a very crude form and then you begin building in your features in, in a, a big way, big blocky way, maybe even at a lower subdivision and it would begin to resolve itself. So in the next video, we'll talk about my next favorite brusher, which is the Flatten 404, which is something that I've been carrying around now for many years. It's no longer included in ZBrush by default, which is why I had you install it way back at the beginning of this tutorial a few videos ago. So we'll take a look at that uh, here very shortly.